Hi, I'm Steve Hargadon, and welcome to the first keynote on Tuesday from the Global Education Conference. Well, this is the first keynote if you're in Western time zones. <laughs> and thanks for, for being here, everybody. Heather, will you say your name for us? Yes, yeah, I'm Helen Lefty. So, welcome to Helen Lefty. This is uh, really fun. Thanks to our supporters and sponsors. Uh, special appreciation to Iron for being the, the keystone partner of the conference. We've really appreciated the support and enthusiasm this year. This is a chance for those of you who are participating to let us know where you're participating from. Look to the left of the map for the star icon. Click it twice and then click on the map. And also put your location in the chat. Well, we're really spanning the globe if that's Hawaii. What a terrific global audience. Thanks for being here and for listening to the recording. Thanks so much for doing so. Hella, I'll turn the time over to you and I'll be here to, to help as you need. Thank you very much. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Good evening to those who are going to bed. And very soon. Uh, well, as you can see, TN is a Tunisian education and resource network, part of the international network. I am a global community, and I hope this presentation will help you understand what we are doing in I earn, T earn, Mern, uh, I earn Lebanon, I earn Taiwan, everywhere around the world to make uh, the earth a better place. Um, I have entitled my presentation, The Path Towards Global Citizenship Can Also Be a Building Bridges Towards Global Citizenship, Anything But a Road Going Towards Global Citizenship. Um, so our next page. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I come from, as you see, a small place in North Africa. We are surrounded by the Mediterranean. We are close to, we are in Africa, of course. Uh, we are surrounded by Algeria, Libya, uh, and uh, to the north we have Italy, France, and Europe. So we are a Mediterranean Arab Muslim country. And all of you know that um, we started the revolution, uh, the Arab Spring in Tunisia. And I would like to take you to uh, some context. I'm moving to the next page. So yeah. let's make sure that the follow button is clicked at the top of the screen for you. And then you use the little arrow to move forward. Okay, so I can do that now. I'm not sure. I'm glad to move them forward for you if it's not happening. Uh, uh, yes, okay. uh, yes, that's it. A brief history of Tunisia. In fact, uh, the, the picture is blurred, but in 1956 it was independence, and uh, you can see. A, the former president Bourguiba, who was a leader and who uh, helped uh, for the emancipation of women, and here he was rewarding women who at that time got prizes for the work they had done. So, um, um, really, a country where women got their emancipation very, very early, and that's why I grew up in a country where education was compulsory. Uh, if I move to the next page, I will. Uh, yeah. uh, 2011, the revolution. 
and the revolution uh, brought all the aspirations of young people whom you can see on this slide. People who fought for dignity, for recognition, for peace, and uh, for democracy. We are taking, this is our context now, and we are fighting for these values. Uh, and what uh, I'd like to tell you very briefly, uh, in fact, we moved from quantitative teaching to quality education in 1958 um, the, with the, the, um, this emancipation of Tunisian people and with independence, a major reform in education took place and it was open to all Tunisians wherever they were. Later in 1991, uh, this education reform was turned toward the future where compulsory and free schooling with a new structure in secondary education took place. And finally, the last reform in 2002 turned towards quality education for all. So we are part of the UN program, Education for All program. However, there's a lot to be done and this was written, but on the ground, things were different. And uh, this is why uh, w uh, the Education Act said that schools will endeavor to provide quality education for all learners, develop their gifts and skills, help them acquire ICT competencies, and apply them in various fields. That was 2002, and I was part of the people who developed that national curriculum. I was very happy to be part of it, and um, what we tried to do uh, in uh, the education field was to integrate ICT. Now, uh, 12 or 10 years later, with uh, the post-revolution era, uh, we asked ourselves the question, why integrate ICT in education in post-revolution Tunisia? The, the answer is, of course, uh, we started, the revolution started on Facebook, and all the youth, digital natives, were there. And uh, of course, if they started their revolution, they need to, to be part of it. They need to be part of the digital revolution. We need to foster a digital culture to boost creativity, to help involve mixed ability learners, to economize efforts. Uh, we can't be everywhere. We need to integrate learners with learning difficulties and disabilities, so education for all, and also be inclusive and help fight school dropout, which is a very important in Tunisia. And of course, we need to link education uh, to the needs of the labor market, and the problem in Tunisia is, of course, unemployment as in other countries. So we decided that ICT is a new pedagogy as it empowers students who will construct their knowledge. They will develop common competencies such as critical thinking, collaborative work, project-based learning through the use of ICT, and they learn new tools and also a curriculum based on the values of tolerance, global citizenship, and connectedness, and finally open unto other cultures and build the community of learners. To implement the pedagogy, we thought of developing projects first at the local level in uh, schools in Tunisia, projects between schools, then uh, at the regional level, and we have I Earn Arabia today, connecting uh, schools between the countries in the MENA region. And finally, of course, at the global level, and this is why we are here today. I Earn, I met 
I earn. I came to I earn 2003, and that was a fantastic experience. As the mission and vision of I earn is to empower youth to make a meaningful difference in the health and welfare of the people and the planet, and that is to me so important as it needs really it meets the curriculum, it meets our um, mission and uh, vision as well. And so we decided uh, for a long time I have been coordinator of IEARN and then uh, I tried to, uh, to we are many teachers in Tunisia involved in IEARN and we had lots of activities, lots of projects, but before the revolution it was hard for us to become an NGO. Hopefully, uh, after the revolution and um, in October 2011, we became an NGO. And here is our logo and here is a slide showing what we have done during this year. A turn mission, TRN mission. Um, I'm quoting Negro County Resnick and Castle. Uh, it seems to be old, an old quotation, however, it is still so valuable today as it says, global connectedness can enable new knowledge building communities in which children and adults around the globe collaborate on projects and learn from one another. These efforts require new multicultural, multilingual and multimodal approaches to learning. New is important to key word because if we want to become global, we need to have all these exchanges. So our objectives, uh, basically we are focused on the project approach and not only in English but also in other subjects to enhance technology, to foster the values of citizenship, especially today in Tunisia where we are building values of citizenship, building democracy and building tolerance not only between people around the world but also between our youth in our own country where the word democracy was absent for a long time. Today it's important to engage in uh, this fantastic project and uh, engaging in I earn is uh, really vital today. Our third objective is to incite both students and teachers to work and communicate using technologies. That's not really obvious. We are in a country where technology is not always available and uh, although most students are digital natives, teachers are not technology literate and are afraid of using technology. So not only is it uh, uh, possible to have technology in all over the country, but also these teachers need uh, a lot of training and need to understand that they are not uh, using technology for technology's sake, but using it to develop competencies among students. Uh, so, uh, imperatively train teachers in using digital resources, in using online projects, and empowering them for professional development reasons. And when it comes to professional development, they become aware of it. We are reaching out to teachers across the country with a focus on underprivileged areas. After the revolution, we found out that there are so many underserved areas where a lot of work has to be done. And we are partnering with associations and NGOs. A lot of them are coming to Tunisia and to the Arab world to help set up this uh, country with uh, new competencies and uh, new values. We are engaging, of course, in the UN Millennium Development Goals through our online projects. And I'm going now to show you the uh, projects we have uh, set up in Tunisia. And the first one was in 2000 and 
three. It was an environmental project in a lake in the north of Tunisia where endangered species were um, were threatened really by uh, uh, the the salty water. So uh, what we uh, wanted to do is to help, and there was a global project um, about uh, this lake, and the, the students uh, uh, took part in an iron project in Lebanon, a new scan project. It was a successful project, and um, the the teacher is uh, of course now uh, a great defender of iron. Um, another project was Beirut 19 with Eliane uh, Metni, who is so dedicated in iron, and uh, she had that project where uh, students developed um, um, productions, written productions about their identity, how they felt as Arabs in the 21st century. They were also successful, and some of our, of our students were were on the final list. Uh, list. Um, we ha of course, we are part of Iron Arabia, as I said, and uh, we are taking part in other projects such as the Global Campaign in Education because Iron is so unique. It helps you get not only into the projects on Iron website, but it opens doors to global citizenship with global projects and uh, with the Global Campaign for Education is one of them. Um, Future Citizens is a project after the revolution that uh, students started with their teacher, and uh, there was a fantastic exchange with a school in the U.S., and Frida Goodman is presenting this afternoon with her colleague, Nauru's um, from Tunisia, they are presenting this fantastic uh, project, Future Citizens, which enhances the, um, the will, the passion, the dedication of students who are really taking part in uh, this new adventure of democracy in Tunisia and who are building the country. They cannot do it alone. They need to be coached by people who are as dedicated as the two teachers I mentioned, but others around the world. And uh, I uh, really encourage you, if you are awake, to watch, uh, the, to attend the presentation this afternoon uh, with uh, about this uh, project. Um, this is what the students in the U.S. Now I'm getting back. To, yeah, I'm getting back to this slide because this shows the uh, uh, the ideas that students in the U.S. Um, came out with, and uh, we, they uh, said that fundamentally they are united by the universal right that would end human crisis in the world. We will introduce people to zero. Um, events of natural um, uh, disasters globally. So this means a lot. This means that the students have understood how much it's important to collaborate to end all these disasters. And this is what future citizen means to the U.S. students. Our students also had um, another explanation, but they met uh, in one point that is building a the same future together united by universal rights and united by universal values. Uh, last year and this year we celebrated the World Teachers Day. It was a fantastic event where students taught us a lesson. They uh, Prepared a, um, they prepared um, some interactions, films, videos, uh, some dialogues. Uh, they enacted small plays. 
and uh, they thought of one thing, they are responsible for their future. They want to take action. They want to perform. And celebrating their teachers is just fantastic because when one of the students uh, said his poetry, his poem about his teachers in French, uh, and uh, another one said uh, a slam, had a slam about his teachers, and they sang songs about their teachers, they celebrated their teachers, that showed us how much we can do if we have the passion to do so. Debating uh, is a, another program. It is Young Arab Voices. It is a program launched by the British Council in Tunis, but we adopted this program because we thought that if we are teaching democracy to our students, we need to definitely to show them the path towards democracy. And one major path is to learn the debating techniques, to learn to take uh, the lead, but also to listen and to listen carefully, to speak, to voice uh, ideas, but to voice them in a meaningful way. And uh, we, um, we started this debating these debating sessions with teachers. We are training teachers using debating techniques and they are cascading these trainings to their students and empowering them with these uh, important techniques to be able to talk and to discuss with people who don't, ne who don't have the same ideas necessarily. Uh, so be tolerant, accept others' ideas. And, um, and this is a very successful program as well that we have incorporated in, um, in I Earn Tunisia, T Earn. Uh, another program is Le Café Littéraire. Le Café Littéraire is a place where students would uh, read a book but, and then uh, come and talk about it using new technologies and using the book. Uh, the first uh, Café Littéraire was about Animal Farm by George Orwell, so famous novel. And we were so much surprised to see how much the students learned from this book and how they could uh, link it to their real world, to the country, uh, with all what is happening uh, in the country nowadays. Um, that was a fantastic um, opportunity to discover the talents of our students. Uh, this is uh, another view of that Café Littéraire where students were discussing ideas. And it, what was fabulous about it is that it was um, uh, really um, a teamwork and it was sound and we, we saw the implementation of collaborative work, of critical thinking, of developing new competencies, language competencies, and developing ideas uh, and putting them into practice and coming up with a great day. Uh, storytelling is also another project and uh, we are working with other associations to, and this is a, a view of a Sunday where students in an underserved area were invited to listen to stories told by a teacher who brought with her all the necessary equipment and you can see the walls here with all the paintings and uh, everything needed to listen to stories uh, in their uh, mother tongue, but also stories uh, stories in French and uh, in engaging them in uh, reading, which is nowadays not really frequent among our students. Celebrating Earth Day also in primary schools and um, 
uh, in other schools around the country and students planted trees. These are, this is a slide about uh, students in primary education who planted trees uh, in their schools and who also recycled plastic bags and worked with the teachers were and on a poster that was April 20th and they celebrated Earth Day with their teacher. That uh, took place in many schools, mostly underserved schools where teachers helped a lot. Um, Celebrating uh, also Earth Day at university, we uh, this is a member of uh, this teacher is a member of TN, and with her university students, they also celebrated Earth Day. Another important value is solidarity, and we have a program which is school twinning. And uh, here you can see primary school uh, students who came to present a play about the revolution, how they felt it, how they lived it, how they talked about their experience about, um, uh, about the revolution. Uh, that was fantastic because the, this little girl uh, explained the process through which they went to end up with this play. And because it was in a courtyard and there were lots of people, she was very proud to present her fellow students and she did not start the presentation before everybody was quiet, before adults were quiet. So um, we are really proud of the teachers who are helping students become active citizens and become leaders. Um, in my school, your school project, which is part of IEARN projects as well. We started with an underserved school again where uh, English is taught in, um, in primary education and uh, where the students wanted to do something unique which was exchanging the um, ideas about their schools uh, there's a joint, and they um, had a Skype connection between the two schools. And I need to say that they didn't have any um, wireless connection, but the, the students made it possible by bringing devices so that this happened. So we are starting at the local level, as I said, and uh, I hope. This is going to be a start in uh, exchanging with other schools. So these the learners are today's learners and they are tomorrow's citizens. ICT is a great tool, but it has to be considered mostly as a new way of approaching education and empowering young generations with 21st century skills. And I am now quoting uh, um, a, a document from Virginia University about 21st learning skills. We, and the first skill is, of course, IT. Uh, so and, um, students need to access, analyze, manage, integrate, evaluate, and create information. Um, in a variety of forms using appropriate technology skills to communicate uh, in a written, oral, and multimedia format. The second 
skill is thinking and reasoning skills, and this is what we are trying to do to uh, to um, empower students with critical thinking, trying to have them um, have reasoning processes and framing, uh, analyzing and solving problems. Uh, using appropriate technology tools. All of us are very much worried about social media. As I said earlier, in Tunisia, we started uh, the revolution with Facebook. However, what is now happening to Facebook in Tunisia, and I believe in other countries around the world, is not exactly what we intend to use it for. So what... <laughs> Sorry for being clean. Uh, and what we are trying to do really now is to um, use um, to use this um, all these skills, uh, critical thinking, for good uh, reasons, and not to use it to develop uh, maybe um, uh, um, tools or a content which are not uh, appropriate. And uh, of course, the third skill is personal and workplace skills. If we, uh, and uh, we are looking very much to that, and I think, uh, as David said earlier in his presentation, uh, we are definitely trying to uh, connect students to the real world and to, to connect people globally. It is important thus to uh, empower our students with leadership behavior, respect for others, ac accepting responsibility for person, personal actions, and taking the initiative to plan uh, and execute tasks and interact product productively as a member of a group. Um, yes, uh, Jenny, you're saying that this could be adapted to elementary and primary too. Yes, we are starting. We start with primary education. There are so many projects uh, in IEARN, Collaborative Project Center, for elementary schools, and we need to adapt the content to uh, the, the age of those students and to their uh, cognitive abilities. It's important to do so and to, to so that they grow up in this environment. So together, going digital together, we can. Uh, we are using all these uh, possibilities, uh, both at uh, the local, national level, with. Uh, the tools that we have, but uh, we are learning with the world. And um, I, I would like to share with you one project, which is a, a, a project that sums up really the uh, idea of uh, going um, global citizens. We are in the process of writing a constitution in Tunisia. And next year, we will have elections. So we have started working on this. Students need to know what um, a constitution means. We need to know what, uh, the, uh, what elections mean so that they can vote in a very independent way. They need to acquire the tools. And I think the, in Tunisia we are starting this constitution, but uh, in other parts of the world, such as Arab countries, which are now uh, also growing in revolutions, they, are, uh, they will be, or they are in the process of writing a constitution. So that can be a, an example. It is our future. Um, it's our future project. We have started this, but it's just a starting point. Um, I'm going to and uh, the video. maybe we can watch two minutes. Steve, would you help me maybe with two or three sure. minutes with the video? 
So I'm going to take us to the video. If it doesn't start playing on your computer, please click on it. Uh, just click play, and we'll start it now. Can you hear the sound of the video, the music? I can't either. I can't hear the sound of the video. Here it is now. Enough? Yes. Uh, was this you about can... where you wanted to stop? Sorry? I can't hear, Steve. Was this about where you wanted to stop? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so, uh, this is an example, and you can watch the video. It's really very interesting. It was done by the students themselves, and uh, they, they uh, were coached by the teachers, but that was all. So um, what I, my conclusion is that um, we are not reinventing the wheel, but we are creating conditions that would ultimately make of school spaces where values lead to effective learning, where a sense of achievement is really perceived by learners who are partners in the learning process where uh, 21st century skills will definitely enhance progress and ascending, and where uh, literacy for peace will definitely transform some gloomy realities into a bright future for determined younger generations whose frontiers will be banished and who will get rid of barriers to set up a free, generous, global citizenship. And I'm quoting Dave who says, what we are doing in IEARN is unique in global connections. Uh, what we are doing and the future of uh, these projects is first IEARN Arabia, which is a sound program for the MENA region. And more globally, what we are doing is the Global Connections Exchange 2.0 program between 20, 19 countries in the MENA region and uh, the US. This is a sound program, but also all the programs on IEARN um, in the, the Globe, the Collaboration Center are also very important and every day a new project is, is found and a new collaboration between countries leading to understanding. My final quote is T.S. Eliot, only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm open to questions. So if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. That's the hand icon in the participant window, or put your question in the chat. Uh, one of the questions I saw, maybe um, I can answer it right now, is about the sustainability of the uh, of these projects and if they are part of the curriculum. Absolutely. Uh, what I showed at the beginning, 
uh, was the uh, the official document that the Ministry of Education has elaborated. And uh, what um, is important in that uh, document is that it gives us the opportunity to uh, think in terms of uh, values to be enhanced in terms of developing IC tools and in terms of uh, working with others. So um, this was an opportunity that started in 2002 and when I uh, worked with iEARN, I started working with iEARN, I uh, was so excited about being able to implement uh, this, all these ideas in the project uh, elaborated by iEARN. And uh, we have, as uh, I am a senior inspector, supervisor, and trainer, and uh, uh, we have a continuous learning programs for teachers. Uh, it, that means that uh, they come to the training center at least once a week, and uh, they get training. And we have put uh, project-based learning, we have enhanced, as I showed in my um, presentation, we have uh, developed the idea of project-based learning. Uh, that was very difficult, I must admit, at the beginning, because teachers are always uh, concerned about uh, the output and not necessarily about the, the, the whole process. In fact, if, you, if we don't develop uh, the process as such, we cannot end up with sound, sustainable project and uh, ultimately with students being able to think in, to think, develop ideas and also produce them. Uh, the the uh, video is one possibility and this shows that the students have been empowered and can, are now mastering uh, the technology as well as uh, the ideas themselves. So uh, that is uh, very important in uh, our uh, situation. So uh, yes, absolutely, uh, the sustainability is there. Are there questions? If you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat or to raise your hand. Otherwise, hello, I'm going to clap for you, hovering over the smiley face and clicking on the applause button. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for attending. I hope uh, it was clear and uh, you liked the session. Yes, Diane, Steve, there, I think Diane, you have a question. Do you have a question or were you clapping? Sometimes people click on the raised hand icon to clap. But if you have a question, I'm glad to give you the microphone. Okay. Actually, I'm in the middle of the presentation of your presentation, Hela. Uh, is it possible if we have the project in the school? I mean, in in the middle, in the middle, in the junior high school age students? Yes, absolutely. Um, we work a lot with the middle schools uh, because uh, the students. Uh, first, do have the language 
and then uh, there are so many projects they can work on. Uh, if you also link the projects to the curriculum, that is meaningful. Uh, in fact, in our curriculum project, uh, uh, based learning is is uh, included. So uh, students with their teachers always start a project, and uh, we celebrate their project. Uh, once or twice a year, depending on the possibilities we have, and celebrating um, projects is so empowering. You feel that the students are working towards the project, and they come up with various um, outcomes. If you, uh, I can give you the link to our uh, team. And Facebook page, and you will see how much students are doing. Okay. Thank you, Hella. Thank you. Thank you. There's a question from Nepal. There is hello. Uh, thank you for your presentation, and uh, though I missed part of your speech uh, during my uh, ab uh, absence, but uh, I would like you to share in the future, of course, uh, I believe that you will encounter mm -hmm. some kind of a conflict or some kind of a difficulty. Can you uh, kind of uh, predict uh, maybe the, bad, the, the challenges for, so far for you? Uh, can you share some of some of the challenges that you uh, anticipate to face, and uh, what do you think that you might uh, work hard on? Yeah, because I'm quite curious about this because uh, right now, currently, as we can see that uh, economically speaking, uh, most of the uh, countries who are faced with uh, challenge from the economic decrease. And uh, as a teacher, and uh, and I expect that that will be uh, impact uh, toward the education part. So I would like to, uh, to to know what what your anticipation and your challenge in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you for raising this point. I haven't talked about the challenges, although there are many. Uh, it, yes, as you're pointing out, there are, uh, there is an economic crisis worldwide. However, uh, you know, it really depends on uh, what you want to put in there. Um, are we in Tunisia, and especially in the English department, because um, this happens, but not everywhere. It isn't the curriculum, but not all the teachers are uh, really implementing the. Uh, these projects, we are, and uh, as in other countries, we are uh, really trying to make our best, and uh, it really depends on the uh, on the motivation of the teachers. However, teachers have found out that because students are not always motivated to come to the classroom, when they start a project, the learning uh, has become meaningful, and because students are involved, they feel uh, they are doing something. That's important. And the challenge is really to uh, uh, raise the awareness of teachers to this issue of motivation. Because when we train teachers, the first thing they will tell you, oh, students are not motivated. They don't want to work. Here is a fantastic solution. It links learning to the real world. It brings the real world to the classroom, and it takes them out. And it gives them the possibility to use these new tools. Uh, th that's the way out. Economically, uh, it depends on schools. It depends on countries. Um, we are trying to use what we have, and this is what I'm, I always tell the teachers, we cannot provide you with what we don't have. We try to figure out ideas, to come up with ideas that can be implemented with the possibilities, 
with the, uh, the equipment we have and this is it and um, I think we can do a lot even with very, very little possibilities. Thank you, Pella. That's a very uh, a wonderful remark, and I will keep it in mind and and, uh, and hope that uh, even though we in the face of the economic crisis and uh, different uh, education system, and I uh, thank you for sharing the TS at its words, and um, it's a good remark. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Hella. I'm going to turn the recording off. Thank you.